Hey guys, welcome to another video. So in this one, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I find a certain angle, which is from MAJ of this nice, beautiful house that was actually originally from the IGCC 2022 paper. So let's read about it and see what the task is. Now, ABCDE is a cross section of the prism where ABDE is a square, BCD is an equilateral triangle. Now they tell us EF is two times AE. So suppose this length here was just x, we just labeled it x for a second. That means EF over here would be 2 times x, which just be doubled, isn't it? Now, another cool thing, we, because we know ABCD, ABD is a square, that means all the lengths are the same because that's properly the square, so x, x, x. And we also know that BCD is an equilateral triangle. So you can kind of figure that all of these angles in equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. And that means, and another thing we can notice, if BD is x, which it is, that means CD and BC are also x. Because not only are the angles the same, the lengths are the same. So you can essentially have x here, 60 degrees here, 60 here, and so on. Now, given that tan y is t, find the value of t, give your answer in this particular form. Now, I'll show you guys a step-by-step -step method. So I'm going to flip the page. So look at this from a fresh perspective. We got a we got a triangle sorted out. We know it's immediately it's a right angle triangle. Why? Because the vertical line is literally perpendicular to the ground. Remember, wall, straight line down from the ceiling or wall is perpendicular to your floor. Now, let's relabel this. So AE, we know is X. EF would be 2X. KF would be X as well, because it's square. We know the fact that this is a right equilateral triangle, so we've got 60 degrees. And of course, JK and rest are X. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull out this right angle triangle, because we know J, this is literally a right angle triangle. But before that, I'm gonna just label this point N, because it's the midpoint of h and k and we know nk is half of x but i'm gonna do something different yeah i'm gonna just pull it out and use the uh Sokotoro rule now check it out so we've got jn x 60. so when you Sokotoro, we need to firstly look at which one is the opposite adjacent and so on and just label what we have so immediately we can see that jn which is opposite 60 is therefore the opposite and the long diagonal side is the hypotenuse so we're gonna put h at the top therefore we're gonna use the sign rule yeah because sign is literally so as in soccer tour. Now therefore, this means we're going to have sine of the angle 60, which is equal to the opposite JN over X. Perfect. Now all you want to do is literally just multiply X across. So you're going to have JN the subject. And if you do that, you're going to get X times sine 60. And sine 60 in your calculator, guys, just pop it in. You get root 3 over 2 X. Because remember, you still got X. And that's it. All your answers here are going to be terms of X. That's what we're going to do. Now, because we know that this length here is now root 3 over 2x, and we know that this long down from m to n is x, we can work out the length of jm. So that means we're going to have x plus our answer, which is jm, x plus root 3 over 2x. Now, we don't leave our answer like that, guys. Yeah? It doesn't look that nice. So we want to factorize x out. Remember, x is 1x. If you factorize it, it should be 1 plus root 3 over 2, close bracket, x. x could be in the front or back, by the way. Now we got that. So jm is sorted. So we can take that off. Now, the next thing I want to look at is finding the length of AM. So to do that, we need to firstly understand that we can probably just draw another triangle, another line from M connecting to the midpoint of AE. Because why? You make another triangle triangle. So it look a bit like this. And then you can finish off to A. And we know straight away this is going to be a triangle triangle. Because this is literally parallel to EF. And that makes it perpendicular to the point. So let's pull out the triangle. What we have here, we know that this whole length is 2x. And we know that this length a to the midpoint is just half of x. So it would be 0.5x. So we've got am that we can work out. Now, this is much nicer than the first one because you can just use Pythagoras. You know, you've got rangle triangle, you've got three things. Let's use Pythagoras. And Pythagoras tells us we need to square both of these short side to equal the diagonal side squared. So 2x squared plus 0.5x squared must equal am squared. Now, easy trick, guys, because you've got a calculator. Just type this. In your calculator, type this. Type 2 squared plus 0 0.5 squared. Just like that. And if you do that, you get an answer. And then square root it, and you should get root 17 over 2. And because we've got x squared, remember, you're squaring that as well, so you get an x. And you're square, root, so you're square rooting both of them. So this becomes just am. So am should equal that. Now, literally, we're practically done, guys. Because now we have jm sorted. We have am sorted. Let's pull out the final triangle, which is A, J, M. Now, we've got the length of A, M, and J, M. We know that the answer has been in terms of tan, because that's what they told us. But just to be clear why it's tan, 
tan tells us, which is toa, we need opposite and adjacent. We know opposite angle y is jm, which is the opposite. And we know am is the adjacent, because it's next to the angle. So it's going to be tan of the angle y, um, which equals opposite jm over am. So it looks like that. And just substitute what you just found, guys, yeah? Oops. Substitute what you found. And when you do that, oh yeah, one thing I forgot. Because you've got x on both sides, you can cancel it now. You can literally just cancel like that, because x over x cancels out. And that's it, guys. We're practically done. So put this in your calculator, 1 plus root 3 over 2 over that, and you should get an answer that looks a bit like that. Now be careful, this ain't the final answer. Why? Because, the, because they wanted it in a specific solution. They wanted it in terms of root p plus root q. Now 2 root 17 doesn't fit that. The way to make it work, you see the 2 over here. So the whole 2 can be written as root 4. And how do you know that? The trick is, square it, so 2 squared is 4, and then put a root over it. So it'd be square root of 4 times square root of 17. So it'll be like this, root 4, root 17. Put that in a calculator, you're going to get exactly root 68. And that's it. This is the answer, guys. Let me know how this one went.